Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, Parquet, mostly my package, uh, Parquet 2, because this is very short. Uh, so for anybody who's not already aware, uh, Parquet is a columnar binary data storage format. Um, it's been around a good while now, uh, about 10 years or so, um, and it's it's very popular. It's very very widely used uh, in certain circles. Uh, in particular, if you're doing like quote unquote big data stuff, Apache Spark, that kind of stuff, it's it's probably outputting Parquet all over the place. Um, uh, so it's it's arguably um, finally the thing that's supplanted uh, CSV at a lot of institutions. So a uh, brief overview of, of how it's been available in Julia. Um, first, there was uh, Parquet.jl, which was uh, Tanmay Mahapatra. I, th I, I saw him at s some point in the conference. Um, uh, so he did this very early on, uh, back in 2016. So we've had um, that available thanks to him. That did not get right capability until 2020. Uh, in 2021, I did Parquet2. Um, not really any major features on that uh, uh, in the intervening time frame, but uh, in 20, this year I rewrote uh, Thrift, which is um, a different type of uh, serialization format that's used for uh, the metadata for Parquet, and uh, it was a bit of a performance bottleneck, uh, so I redid that this year. Uh, uh, so here's uh, just a very brief sample of what it looks like to use this. It's deliberately very mundane. So, um, uh, you know, just write file. It takes anything that's uh, in a, a tables.jl compatible format. Um, so, you know, spe speaks the language generally of the Julia data ecosystem. Uh, the objects that it outputs are themselves tables.jl tables. Uh, this data set thing is, is what holds the metadata. Uh, it, the, and you have ways of loading that up lazily. So uh, row groups, which are subsets of rows, uh, or you could load only specific columns. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's compatible with the normal uh, table stuff. Th this example is, is with struct arrays, which I've been using a lot recently, but uh, do data frames or anything else. Uh, so brief overview of the features of that, um, you know, so, so like I said, it, it, it speaks the sort of standard language of the Julia data ecosystem where it, it knows that missings are nulls, um, and, uh, you know, it, it recognizes anything that, that's, uh, tables.jl compatible. Um, uh, as I said, every, you know, it's lazy by default, so you could, uh, load only certain columns. Um, it supports all of the non-hierarchical uh, data types uh, that Parquet supports. So uh, there's quite a lot there, uh, a lot of weird things like weird timestamp formats and stuff like that. Um, there is support for multi-file data sets. Uh, it's somewhat limited, but it's there. And uh, right now, Snappy, GZIP, ZSTD, LZ4 compression um, and also understands uh, path strings via file path space, so uh, you can load it from, for example, S3 or something without any any trouble. Um, so uh, I, one thing that people ask me about a lot is is you know which which format should I use, and uh, yeah, so this this is a little glib, but um, uh, you know the first thing I I think you should consider is whether, it, you know, you have something that's already explicitly tabular. Uh, if it's not, I, I think you should maybe think twice before using explicitly tabular serialization format. Um, and um, I, I, th I think there's a lot, of, a lot of good reasons to use Arrow. So, so Parquet will never be as, as CPU efficient as Arrow because uh, it has to do a lot of copying. It ha has this kind of weird, uh, very null aware, um, binary format where uh, sort of the, you know, the positions of data are not predictable, so you wind up having to copy everything. And um, it, uh, you know, Arrow also supports compression standards. So, um, uh, I, you know, I, I, again, this is a little bit glib, but um, 
uh, you know, I think a lot of the use of Parquet is that, you know, there's a lot of people that have to use it uh, all over the place because it's, you know, it predates Arrow. Um, and, you know, there are exceptions to this. So if, if you have data that's mostly null, uh, the Parquet file is going to be a lot smaller. But, you know, there's, there's also, if, if it's already gzip compressed, you know, how efficiently is that going to compress the nulls? Maybe very efficiently. So, um, uh, yeah, so that's that's my summary. I'd say uh, Arrow is, is is pretty interesting, but a lot of times you'll have to use Parquet. Um, so uh, some of the challenges in uh, uh, working on this. So uh, you know, since, since I I first registered this repository, um, you know, some people opening issues, and there's been you know a fair amount of trying to deal with edge cases. There's um, you know, it, it's it's kind of a high entropy format, so uh, there's a lot of different ways of describing the same data. Um, a lot of that is, you know, it, it just, it's necessary. Uh, some of it's not, but there's a lot that can go wrong because of that. Um, for Parquet 2, I've been using PyArrow as kind of the definitive implementation where I'll, you know, insist I should always be able to read stuff that it reads and always be able to write stuff that uh, it can read. And, um, uh, you know, a lot of stuff in the world is, is from Spark or something else in JVM, but testing with that is, is a giant pain in the neck. So I haven't done a huge amount of that yet. Some of the samples that are in there are from Spark, but, um, you know, mostly it's been against PyArrow. And a lot of people have opened issues and uh, uploaded files that I've been able to check uh, and fix issues, so that, that's been really nice. So thank you to everyone who's done that. Um, so outstanding issues, things I'd like to do. Um, so for me, the big issue with this is it, I don't support uh, uh, hierarchical data types, which Parquet does support, um, but the implementation is very complicated. It, it essentially involves a a full implementation of this thing called Dem De Dremel. And, you know, the problem with this is that uh, if you need it right now in Julia, you know, you're just, you're more or less hosed. Uh, you got to whip out Python call or something because there's nothing that's uh, going to read them. So, so that's, you know, it, it's kind of an issue, even though, you know, the vast majority of Parquet files around might not have it, uh, it, would nice, it would be nice to know that you have recourse if you needed it. Um, Multi-file data sets, uh, it, it works, it's, it's not great. A big problem is that I, as far as I know, there's not like a real spec for this. It's kind of weird because it is mentioned in the, uh, the official spec. Um, there's things that refer to it, but it kind of seems that the implementations more or less do their own thing. Um, uh, I would like to do, um, uh, you know, be able to do type stable loading, which uh, actually isn't really a big priority for this because, you know, usually you're going to let the schema describe itself, but that's just probably how I would do it if I were going to do it again today. Um, and some other things I'd, I'd like to consider, um, possible future things to do that could touch on Parquet. Um, uh, when, when I did uh, Parquet 2, um, it, it there wasn't really good options for wrapping the Arrow C++ library, but now there's this C library, so I, th I think that might be a little more doable. Um, but I think something that's a little more interesting is the possibility of doing it via Polars, because I think there'd be a number of advantages to having a really good Polars wrapper in Julia. Um, I've experimented with this, but I find that writing an FFI in Rust is, is unpleasant, because you have to essentially violate all of um, the safety guarantees of Rust. So uh, it would be cool if, if one of the Rust people uh, were interested in that. Maybe one of the people that were hooting at the mention of it this morning will show up. Um, okay, so that's it for me. Uh, so, uh, I, I think 
parquet.jl is is now a, a proper subset. Um, uh, th there were some data types that last I looked at it were not not being handled properly that are in parquet two. Uh, I don't want to speak out of term on that. It's been a while since I looked at uh, parquet. Uh, I don't know. I don't think much work has been done on it since. Um, it was kind of intended as a replacement, but if you know if parquet goes on and it's it's still useful, uh, that's great.